hello everyone. Thank you very much for joining this webinar. And uh, good morning to all of you uh, joining from Europe and good afternoon uh, to those of you joining from Asia. Uh, it's our pleasure to have you uh, here today. And uh, my name is Emma Trash and I'm the Business Development Manager uh, for the European Market. I will be uh, the speaker of today's webinar. And uh, next to me is my colleague from uh, the European Sales team, Marcus Su. Good morning, everyone. I'm Marcus. And Marcus is going to help me um, operate the uh, computer and to show you the live demo. So today, uh, topic is uh, the designer VLM mode. And uh, after a short uh, introduction of the product, we will uh, show you the live demo of it, and uh, at the end we will show you some results that you can achieve with our VLM mesh. Um, we will also have Q&A sessions, so please stay tuned, and uh, you can write your uh, questions, uh, take notes, and we will answer them at the end. So why why our designer VLM, and what is, uh, what is this tool? This is basically an embedded application, and uh, it it can be found in our Movex 3D designer, and it provides the uh, auto and semi-auto uh, meshing functions for generating the boundary layer mesh. I would like to uh, get to the point now, and uh, we will uh, show you the demonstration. So you can see uh, Marcus is showing you the two icons, the designer and the project, uh, those of you who use Modex already know, and uh, we will be using the uh, designer interface now. After launching it, you can choose between the eDesign and the BLM mode. We chose the BLM mode, and you can see that it looks just like eDesign. Uh, we have the five steps on the right side, which we will follow. These are very uh, straightforward wizards. Um, we will import a file, as you can see from here. Uh, our BLM mode uh, supports the file type. Step, IGS, and Parasolid. And um, here we will import uh, this part as the cavity, and this is the step file. So uh, now you can, you can see the part. It is a pretty complicated one, and we can see some red lines. Uh, we're going to run a ch quick check on the geometry to check what are the red lines, and we can see that there are the free edges and tiny edges. This problem needs to be fixed before we move on to step number two, and uh, there are two options to choose from. There's two options and cat doctor. We are going to use the cat doctor here. Uh, cat doctor is a third-party program developed by a Japanese company called Elysium, and at the end of October and in early November, we're going to have three webinars uh, dedicated only to cat doctor. So if you are interested in this tool, please register for those webinars. Right now, you can see we are in the conductor interface, and we did a quick check on the pad to determine what is wrong with it. We're going to use the three-step tool that now uh, Marcus is performing the output stitch on the pad, and after the output stitch, there are still some uh, problems, and we will uh, run the last option, the auto heal option. Uh, now, the software... Uh, finished uh, fixing this part, and uh, Marcus is uh, using the final uh, tool uh, to fix it. Uh, it's called the Out of Sleep. If you are interested in it, uh, I strongly recommend to register for uh, the CAD Doctor webinar. We will not introduce uh, too much here uh, about this. Now the part is uh, filled, uh, and we will export it back to, um, to our designer. The sound you just heard is uh, from CAD Doctor. <coughs> So now you can see that there are normal free edges and normal tiny edges, and uh, we can move on to steps uh, two and three. And uh, while Marcus is uh, assigning the gate and uh, the runners, uh, I would just remind you that this is uh, exactly the same what you are uh, you do in uh, the e-design mode. Uh, you uh, choose your gate, you assign the runner, you can uh, change the parameters for all the features, and then you move on to step number three where you generate the mode base and the cooling channels, 
uh, as well here you can adjust uh, anything you you want in the in, in for those parameters and it takes absolutely no time whatsoever so in step number four you can see that it's completely different and uh, this is all about generating the BLM here we have a few tools that we will uh, follow first is the uh, modify uh, node seeding and the uh, software uh, will generate a default number of the mesh size uh, according to the um, average thickness of the path but we will uh, make it a little bit smaller and you can see that um, you can change the node uh, numbers on any um, any curve or any place you, you would like so here Marcus changed the node number uh, uh, to make it more and um, apart from this uh, you can also adjust uh, the node numbers uh, with two tools that I will use the slide to introduce to you so the two uh, options they call curvature and proximity uh, the curvature, if you tick it, the uh, software will automatically detect all the circular shapes and add six nodes on every circular shape to avoid uh, square shapes or triangles. And uh, the proximity tool will detect all the uh, poor quality uh, parts, uh, narrow edges, like for example here and uh, we'll also add extra nodes on those places. So um, we already uh, chose the node seeding for our part and uh, we can set the BLM parameters. Uh, we can choose the parameter parameters for the cavity, part insert, runner and cooling channels. And uh, we can choose from uh, different types of uh, the, the, the mesh uh, for two layers, three layers, BLM. And we can also change um, uh, the parameters for the runner and cooling channel. Um, the final step will be to generate the solid mesh, generate the BLM. And uh, you can see that there is a table uh, where you choose which steps you want to run. We will run the first four steps. Uh, while the software is working, it is telling you which step is it now. And uh, not right now it's creating the surface mesh. If there is a problem with it, then it will automatically stop and take you to the uh, fixed wizard. Uh, we have some problems with the uh, surface uh, mesh, and we're going to fix it. Uh, you can see that the software uh, takes you automatically to the uh, fixed wizard, and you can choose from many different options, many different tools. We will use the um, merge with tolerance tool, and uh, if there are any overlapping elements, uh, the software will... Uh, delete them and uh, if there are any holes to fill, the software will also do it and we will fix the quality keeping the features of the part and um, you can see that there are uh, two uh, elements left with full aspect ratio and uh, this, uh, this will be fixed uh, using the improved quality and uh, here we will not keep the features because these uh, two elements are very small and uh, they are not important for the uh, for the part shape. Um, we still have uh, four little problems remaining uh, to fix those. Uh, Marcus is using the unfilled wizard. Here you can do it uh, one by one fix or just uh, fix all of them at the same time. And now you can see from the table that everything is. Uh, down to zero and uh, we can move on you can see that the software will not go back and generate the surface mesh again it will go straight into the auto refined surface mesh uh, and uh, while the software is working uh, you can see that the surface will be um, uh, refined in those uh, critical places like for example here Marcus is uh, zooming in the uh, little bends and uh, other features that need to be refined like the circle and especially round shape. Uh, now the software moved on to creating the uh, a solid mesh of the cavity and uh, it, this part is a pretty complicated one. Uh, it's got lots of different features, lots of angles 
uh, lots of round shapes, and uh, it will take probably up to uh, one minute, no longer. And uh, you can see that the tool almost finished creating the uh, BLM. So, so, Marcus, do we have to fix all the problems uh, on the surface mesh? Um, for surface mesh, it's not necessary to fix all the problems. Like that. <coughs> you must make sure there's no uh, cleavage, no overlap, and uh, no uh, worse, the red, uh, bad elements. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, the software returns to you a message that uh, the quality of our BLM is uh, too low and we have to fix it. And uh, from the quality table, you can see uh, the aspect ratio and the skewness, orthogonality and smoothness. All the numbers in red indicate the uh, uh, elements that need to be fixed. To fix them, we have two tools, the AutoFix and the Rebuild Solid Mesh. Uh, we will use the AutoFix first. Uh, highlighted here, you can see all the uh, elements that will be fixed with this tool. And um, this, um, this AutoFix uh, tool is not very invasive. It will only uh, move the nodes around. It will not, uh, it will, it will try to find the uh, optimized Position for the nodes and uh, the rebuild solid mesh tool uh, as the opposite to the auto fix is a tool that will uh, delete the existing uh, bad elements and replace them with new ones, uh, which means it will change the number of mesh. Right now, the bad element count uh, went down to only 108, and we can use the rebuild solid mesh for fixing those problems. So, uh, um, Marcus, do we have to fix all the uh, bad elements from the solid mesh? Um, if, if there's still some uh, bad elements, uh uh, the, the calculation will be uh, still no problem, but the, the, uh, if you have too much, uh, there might be some uh, problem to the average. So here we suggest to uh, fix at least uh, the worst the red uh, study element to become all the zero. No, this this can block uh, that element. Thank you. So uh, um, now you can see already uh, that the remaining bad elements, uh, the number is zero, and the software is just finishing. Um, so here we would like to show you uh, another uh, very cool feature from our software. Uh, right now we're deleting the existing uh, gate and the runner system, and we're going to replace it with uh, uh, another one somewhere else on the path. Um, we are showing this because we want to uh, let you know how easy it is to uh, alter your design, uh, to make changes, and uh, the software will uh, generate the uh, new runner solid mesh and uh, it will also run the cooling channels in this, in this one as well. Uh, so we can see that the software uh, removed the refinement on the right side on the wall, and uh, it will uh, create a new refinement around the new gate, and it will uh, generate the runner solid mesh and the cooling channel and also the mold base. Again, I would like to uh, stress that um, this is uh, also a semi-auto tool, and uh, practically it generates the BLM with uh, one click, and uh, it takes much less time. While the software is working, you can also see the changes that are happening to the path. And uh, the BLM is done, and here Marcus is using the chisel tool to show you inside the uh, beautiful Tetra mesh and uh, the 
uh, prism layers as well, and you can see that it's a true 3D uh, solid mesh for the part and the cooling channel and uh, also the mold base. So the last step will be to save and uh, export this uh, part, and uh, uh, you can see that this this took really no time at all. And uh, in the next step, we would like to show you some results that you can achieve uh, using our uh, boundary layer mesh. So we will go to the other interface, to the project, and uh, we will show you exactly the same part with the same runner design, uh, which we prepared beforehand for the purpose of this webinar. So you can see the quality of the mesh. You can see how precise it is. And uh, we will go to the filling analysis and uh, let's show the milk storm time. You can see how the milk and uh, plastic fills in the cavity and uh, how precise all the results are. From the packing stage, we will show you the volumetric shrinkage. Uh, here, market is using the ice surface tool uh, to show you where uh, the part is most likely to shrink. And uh, let's show the sink mark displacement here. This is a this is a cool tool, and you can see that the uh, red red elements indicate where the part uh, might have the sink mark on the surface. And um, cooling uh, cooling analysis. We will show you the the temperature in the mold base. Uh, we will also use the slicing option, and you can see how uh, how exact the lines are for the temperature and uh, how the uh, temperature is distributed in the whole mold phase. And um, I think a very good this is a very good opportunity to show you the uh, total displacement you know, from the workage. Analysis. Um, we will use uh, a scale to exaggerate a little bit uh, to give you more uh, idea how the part will work. And we can see that this uh, this red um, red bolt will will work the most, uh, but it will work inward, which means the part can be still assembled. It was great. So after this. Uh, Webinar, I will send you the recording of it and uh, the presentation that I shared, just a few slides from it. You will have the time to uh, check all of them. And um, thank you very much again. Have a nice day and stay in touch.